The microsurvey labeling defaults give you control over how textiles and layers are created as you're using microsurveys automated cadastral uh, labeling tools. These are a variety of settings that are stored with your microsurvey defaults and what they'll do is they'll build textiles and create layers and so forth as they're required whenever you're performing most of the functions that are in the MS Annotate ribbon. You'll note first of all that our standard terminology for allowing you to specify the plotted size for text is Leroy. And if I open up the help file, I'll show you there's an article here explaining how the old mechanical Leroy devices worked and how they allow you to set a standard plotted height for text. The microsurvey system will take a look at your drawing scale factor and uh, will create textiles as required so that when you plot at the assigned drawing scale factor, you'll have the correct plotted height. If you prefer to use plotted millimeters or plotted inches to set your drawing styles, then I'll show you here you can go into the system toggles and you can tell it to turn off Leroy notation and then you'll be able to specify them as shown here. But I'll keep the Leroy setting just because it's the standard. So let's take a quick look at how these different sections on the labeling defaults dialog are applied. So I've switched over to the Curve Labels section, and you can see that uh, a Leroy size, a style name, a layer name, and a layer color, and a few other elements about how the text is created, are set in this dialog. And here's an example of what a Curve Label created using these options looks like. I'll switch over to the Point Identifiers. So this will create the same elements and control how your point number is labeled in the drawing. Descriptions are assigned here. Again, you'll note that uh, you can customize a lot of things and just remember that uh, it's going to create layers and styles as required. You don't need to set them up in your template. Elevations, if they're required, will be created using this style. Now I'm going to switch over to bearings and distances and you've got lots more options to apply here with uh, bearings and distances because you notice how you've actually got five different styles that you can create and save in your microsurvey settings. The best way to help you understand how these work is just with a couple of examples. So I think what I'll do first is I'll just tell you how to apply a style. If I go to my bearings and distances, let's create uh, a label using style number two. So before we create a label, we want to go into the default section and we want to pick style 2 for bearing and distance. And then in MS Annotate, pretty well any of the automatic labeling functions will apply those settings. So here I'm going to do an auto bearing and distance on this particular line. Just pick on the line, I hit enter, I tell it what side I want the bearing drawn on, and if we zoom in here, now we can see that it's applied that style. Let's get into some more detailed options here. So what I've done is I've created a series of screenshots just showing you how the different styles are applied. And let's have a look at style number one. So this one is the standard microsurvey style. I've just created that so you can see how the bearings are created and you can see how the distances are created. So let's switch over to style number two for both bearings and for distances. And I'll show you the azimuth version first and a couple of things to note here. So this is a style that's created if you want to have a ghosted style of text. You'll note that it uses a different plot height from the previous example. You'll note that it uses a dashed font and that matches the dashed line type that is used. You'll note that an oblique angle is applied to the text to give it an italic appearance. 
and here I'll just switch to the bearing example. So that's our uh, ghosted example. Okay, let's switch over to style number three. Okay, so style number three is uh, created specifically to show you how offset works. And so here's an example of how that offset works. If you're using a heavy line type or if you've got a polyline with some width, then you need to create a little extra clearance before you create the label. So this style uses applies an offset. So here's the azimuth version and I'll switch over to the bearing version. Okay, on to style number four. Switch to how the bearings are assigned. Now this is an example where we've applied a variety of options, but this is also a style that I'll call grid because what we're going to take advantage of is you've got the ability to apply a scale factor that will be applied to the numeric value of the distance label. So in the previous examples, for example, you can see that uh, the ground to grid scale factor was applied, but in this one there is no scale factor applied. And we've also got a suffix to note that this is a grid distance. Other things of note in this style are uh, that we're using a different font. We've used a width to modify the way the font appears. We've applied some additional precision for these distance labels. And you can see in the directions that there are leading zeros in case that's a requirement that you have. Switch over so you can see what the bearing example looks like. Style number five has a few other options applied. So here's the azimuth example. So in this case, I'm going to call this the metric style because what this one does is it will apply a scale factor in the distance label to convert feet distances into metric. A few other things to note. Over on the bearings, we've got reference north checked on. And so what that means is that in an azimuth version, the direction will always be given between uh, 0 and 180 degrees. Or in the bearing version, you'll see that uh, the directions are always given in the north half of the compass quadrant. One other thing to note is that a suffix has been added to the distance labels. And of course you can see in all of these examples that a style name and a layer name and a layer color were created as they were required. Okay, thanks so much for your interest in this topic. It's a function or it's an aspect of microsurvey that gives you a ton of control over how you create your standardized drawings. And remember always as you're developing these, if you wish to save these as defaults, that you can switch over to the MS Tools section. If we go in here, we can save as the default configuration, or you can save a configuration file if once you've set up your labeling defaults, you want to transfer them to other computers.